Hey everyone, welcome. Today we're tackling a fun problem called longest subarray of ones after deleting one element. It sounds a bit wordy, but the core idea is pretty straightforward once we break it down. Let's get started. So here's the official problem statement. We're given an array of just zeros and ones. Our job is to delete exactly one element from this array and then find the length of the longest possible continuous subarray that contains only ones. Let's simplify that. The main goal is to find the longest possible run of ones. The twist is that we have a special power. We can delete one single element to help us achieve that. This might mean deleting a zero that's in our way, or it might mean deleting a one from a group of ones. Okay, let's walk through an example. Imagine we have the array with one, one, zero, one. The zero at index two, is clearly breaking up a potentially longer chain of ones. So let's use our one deletion on that zero. After deleting it, the two groups of ones merge together, giving us an array of all ones. The length here is three, and that's our answer. Here's a slightly longer example. We have a few different zeros we could choose to delete. If we delete the first zero, we get three ones. If we delete the last zero, we get a group of one. But if we delete that middle zero at index four, we connect a group of three ones with a group of two ones. This creates a single, continuous block of five ones. That's our best possible outcome. Now for a really important edge case. What if the array is already perfect, containing only ones? The problem states we must delete one element. So even with an array of three ones, we have to remove one of them. This leaves us with a run of two ones. The answer is therefore the original length, minus one. This is a key detail to remember. So how do we solve this efficiently? A great technique for this kind of problem is the sliding window. Imagine we have a window that we slide across the array. Our goal is to find the longest possible window that follows one simple rule. It can contain at most one zero. A window with one zero is exactly what we're looking for. It represents two groups of ones that can be merged. Here's how it works. We start with a tiny window at the beginning of the array. First, we expand the window to the right one element at a time. As we add elements, we count how many zeros are inside our window. If we ever find more than one zero, oops, our window is now invalid. To fix it, we have to shrink the window from the left side until we've gotten rid of the extra zero, and the window is valid again. After every single move, we check the size of our valid window and see if it's the biggest one we've found so far. Let's try to visualize this. We expand our window to the right. 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So far, so good. We have 1, 0 which is allowed. The window length is 5. Now, we expand again and hit another 0. Our window now contains two zeros. That's not allowed. So we have to start shrinking from the left. We move the left pointer forward until we've kicked out the first 0. Now our window is valid again. We keep doing this all the way to the end of the array. All right. Here's what that logic looks like in Python code. It mirrors the solution from the problem explanation. Don't worry, we'll break down the important parts right now. First, we set up our variables. We need a zero count to track the zeros inside our window, which starts at zero, of course. We need a left pointer to mark the beginning of our window, which also starts at the very beginning. And finally, a variable to store the max length we've found, which naturally starts at zero. The main part of our code is a loop. We use a right pointer that moves from the beginning of the array to the end. This right pointer is what expands our window. Every time the right pointer lands on a zero, we simply increment our zero count. Now for the crucial part. Inside our main loop, we have another small loop. This one only runs if our zero count ever becomes greater than one. If that happens, we know our window is invalid. So we start moving our left pointer to the right. If the element we're leaving behind was a zero, we decrement our zero count. We keep doing this until zero count is back down to one making our window valid again. Okay, so how do we calculate the length? This is a really clever part of the solution. The total size of our window is the right pointer's position, minus the left pointer's position, plus one. The number of ones is just that size, minus the number of zeros. Since our valid window can only have zero, or one zero, the number of ones is just the right position, minus the left position. We compare this length to the max length we've seen so far, and update it if we've found a new best. So how efficient is this approach? For time complexity, it's big O of n. This is because even though we have a nested loop, each element in the array is only ever visited once by the right pointer, and at most once by the left pointer. It's very fast. 
For space complexity, it's big O of 1, or constant space, because we only use a handful of variables to keep track of things, no matter how big the input array gets. Let's recap what we learned. The sliding window is an amazing tool for any problem that asks for the longest or shortest subarray that meets certain criteria. The trick was realizing this problem could be rephrased as finding the longest subarray with at most one zero. And finally, never forget about those tricky edge cases, like an array of all ones. The solution we used handles this perfectly. And that's it. I hope this explanation made the problem feel a lot clearer. If this helped you out, I'd really appreciate a like or a subscribe. If you have any questions or want to see another problem broken down, let me know in the comments. And hey, if you're feeling extra generous, there's always the Boba Fund. Thanks for watching, keep coding, and I'll see you in the next one.